Well, the beads are dry and I have given them a coat of white acrylic ink. This is my preferred um, paint, actually. It's De La Rowney FW white acrylic ink. It's, it's thin and it's totally opaque, beautifully white, and because it's a paint, an ink rather, rather than a, an acrylic paint, it soaks into the body of the paper, even with the PVA glue on it, it's perfect. And so you get this very nice sort of um, white hard bead. Now, it is slight, you won't be able to see it because the light shines on it, but it is actually crinkly. Had we wanted to make perfectly smooth papier-mâché beads, then I would have used paste, papier-mâché paste, and we can do that too, and you can make impressions, and it's a different thing entirely. This gives you these lovely, knobbly, kind of nuggety, bead-like beads. I've made some that are also, um, the hole goes that way, so that it, it was just a question really of just squeezing it like that, and all you have to do is literally just paint quite lavishly the white ink onto it and if you get sort of little folds and things all the better I think it makes for a more interesting bead. Occasionally when you take them off the stick after they've dried you'll notice that they've got a little sort of knobbly bit on the end. What I do is literally just cut that off and then um, stick it onto a wooden kebab stick. They come in so handy these kebab sticks because you can use them again and again. You can always scrape the paint off with the end of a side of a knife or a pair of scissors and if you are doing something and you find they stick to the kebab stick all you need to do then is just um, put a little bit of I don't know baking oil, cooking oil, Vaseline, almost any any sort of greasy thing that will stop it from sticking. Um, this is the last one of these. I've done quite a lot of these already. And then we'll leave them to just dry. And then the next stage will be putting colour onto them. So that's those. I also wanted to show something else that I've made, which might be of interest. Um, I found an old, really old crab claw, big crab claw, on the beach. And thought it was good shape. It reminds me of a... Uh, maybe a foxglove flower. And so what I did is I, I wrapped some paper around it, as I did before, like that. Sort of tear off the end bit and tear off the top bits, so it's quite easy. And then I stuck it into water and squeezed it and ended up with um, these. Now, they may not look all that interesting right now, but they will be, because they can be made into sort of additions to necklaces and what have you. I then stuck them into the PVA and water and then let them dry overnight. And what I did was I just put them on a baking sheet like this. And then I stuck them on top of a radiator. You could put them in an airing cupboard, anywhere where you get some warm air. If it's sunny, you can stick it out. If it's sunny, you can stick it out in the garden or on a window ledge or whatever. And I also made some slightly different shapes so that they will look like sort of flowers maybe from a jungle and torn ones. They just give that feeling of a flower and I've done some that look like leaves and I've done some tiny ones as well and some discs and medallions and when they're all painted up and strung together they look really really interesting. So. When these have dried, I'll paint them different colours and I will also um, put some numbers or letters onto them. Now, I, you can actually just um, draw the letter onto them, A, B, C or P, E, T, E, R, or you can um, buy some letters and if they're not black, I couldn't find any black ones, so I just got the um, permanent marker and just made them black. And then all you have to do then is take the letters out, we'll do that later, and stick them on the side. And then, because the beads themselves will be varnished, either matte varnish or gloss varnish, but the layers of varnish will make sure that the letters don't come off. That's the way to do it if you want really precise letters. 
If you're happy with freehand, then this is the way to go. So I'll see you in a little bit.